Hello, teacher friends. I'm so glad that you guys loved my little Bitmoji Room um, Google header that I put on Instagram this morning. I wish I could take credit for that, but um, the idea is not mine. I've seen a lot of teachers creating them and having some fun with them this past week. So I thought, why not try it myself? One of my favorite things to do is to waste time making things cute. So um, I've been having a ball with that this morning. So I thought that I would give you the tutorial and show you how you could create your own. One thing that I will say as you're looking right here at my Google Classroom header, a lot of people have been asking, is there a way that when you insert the header, you can make it so that the dark overlay is not there? And I believe the answer is no. I've seen some people say that you can actually right click on the Google Classroom header and go to inspect and that will pull up the HTML coding for it. And you can go down and you can find, I don't have it anymore. I think, um, I don't know, I've played around with it so much this morning that I swear it was here earlier, but it is no longer here. But there was a background option here with a little checkbox in front of it. And if I unchecked that checkbox for a background, it did remove that dark overlay. And I was like, yes, that works. But what I found is that as soon as you went out of classroom and came back, it actually reset every time and the dark overlay was back. So I'm pretty sure that that dark overlay is something that um, Google has put there for accessibility issues. And so I don't think that you can get rid of that. So that's something you might want to keep in mind as you are creating your Google Classroom header, that you might want to use light and bright colors because it is going to get darker when it's inserted into classroom and that dark overlay is put, placed on top of it. All right, so you'll see when I go to um, slides here where I created this, that it's much brighter. Okay, so you can see how much brighter that is than in my classroom. So that's because of that dark overlay that they put on it. All right, so, um, how, did, so how was that created? That was just created in Google Slides. So if you open up a blank slide document, um, you can change the size of it because obviously that Google um, Classroom header is long and skinny. So the you're just going to go to File and then down to Page Setup to change the size. And the perfect size seems to be 16.67 by 4.17. So I just changed the size to a custom size and inserted those numbers there and then hit apply. And then that gave me the correct size to create the headers. And so then you just start having fun with it. So the first thing you need to do is um, find a background. So the background was the hardest thing that I found um, the, as part of this project because when you insert a background, because the slide is so long and skinny, it seems to want to stretch it out and make it disproportionate. And so that was really hard to find some that worked. So, um, but to find one, I wanted a background image with a floor. And so I just went to Google and searched for things like brick wall with floor. And you'll see you, you'll get some images to come up. And so if I wanted to try like this one, um, I could pull that up and I could right click and save that image um, to my computer and give it a try. I'm just gonna save that one as brick. You can see I already have a brick wall there. And so then when I come back over to my Google Classroom slide, I'm on Google Slide, I'm going to right click and do change background and choose that image. I saved it to my desktop. And so I'm gonna try that brick one. I bet that it's gonna come in stretched out and really funny looking. So you can see that's pretty stretched. It's not as bad as some of them. Um, but still not super good. So I found a couple. Um, it took me a while to find a couple, but I found a couple that worked. And so I have one here called Brick Wall, and that one seemed to be a little better because the image itself was longer to begin with. And so that one just seemed to work a little better. So you can see that's what I used in this room. So once you get a background that you're happy with for your room, then you just start inserting different objects. So I knew I wanted a sofa and I thought, you know, I want a 
cool velvet sofa. I'm happy that those are back. I don't have one, unfortunately, um, but I do love them. So I searched for a velvet sofa and some different options popped up. So you, it'll be easiest if you find one with a white background or a minimal background um, that is facing straight on instead of angled. So maybe this one would be a good one to use. So if you can right click on the picture and see that image or copy it, I'm just gonna copy it and take it over into PowerPoint. You can see I've got some here I've been playing with. And once it's copied over into PowerPoint, if I pull it over, you can see it has a white background and that's not going to work. Um, so we need to remove that background. So I'm just going to double click on the image and go up to remove background. And then I will stretch the corners out to grab that entire picture. And then yes, so there's my background removed. So now this sofa is ready. So I would just right click and do save as picture. And I'll say navy sofa. And then I can go back to my slide and insert that picture from my computer. And I saved it on my desktop as navy sofa. And so there is my navy sofa. So I can resize that and put it wherever I would like. And so then I just think about what other elements do I want in the room. So you can see that I found a bookcase, a chair, a chalkboard. So lots of different little things. Of course, I have to have my little boxer. Um, so I just found things that kind of made the room me and did the same thing as I did with the sofa there, just saved those images, removed the backgrounds and inserted them in. So, you know, it's a little tedious process, but if you like creating things, um, it's something fun to give a try and do. So, um, yeah, just keep searching for the different elements that you want, inserting them. And then at the end, you can add your Bitmoji in. So if you have the Bitmoji app and you have a Bitmoji, make sure that you have installed the Google Chrome extension. And then you can very easily just go up to your Google Chrome extension and pull in your Bitmoji there by copying it and pasting it in. All right, so uh, that's a very, very quick tutorial about how that was done. And I will um save link this one to my instagram and you are welcome to use this template and the two rooms that i have to kind of tweak and make your own but I hope that's something that you'll have fun with and it will bring a little joy to your google classroom